This is KGW News at Noon. It does not help uh, retain quality educators and diverse educators when they can't afford to live in the city. Our proposal on the table right now will require budget cuts in this year and the next three years. And teachers and Portland Public Schools are still without a deal with a strike set to start on Wednesday. Today, the two sides will be back at the bargaining table. And thanks for joining us at noon. I'm Blair Best. A lot of parents are anxious, and today we're hearing from one parent whose child has a disability. Thomas Schultz has the story. Julie Helzer is a mom of two Portland high schoolers, a daughter at Franklin and a freshman son at Benson. He has always had a lot of trouble. He has a speech disorder. A disorder which leaves him needing assistance from teacher's aides and case managers to help begin assignments and finish classwork. Their speech lessons and academic support classes too. And this year, progress after remote learning for much of middle school. And so he was really looking forward to high school and this new opportunity. Though now she's worried progress could be negated. If the school district and teachers union can't reach an agreement by Wednesday, teachers will strike, something both sides want to avoid, though they say it's up to the other to improve proposals. We need our PAT partners to compromise. The district is still not bringing any serious proposals around the issues that matter most to our uh, students, families, and educators. Regardless, parents and students are stuck in the middle unsure how long a strike could last. I'm worried that it's going to drag on. Thomas Schultz, KGW News. A six-week strike against the big three U.S. automakers appears to be ending. Today, General Motors reached a tentative labor deal with the United Auto Workers. The reported deal is for four and a half years. It includes a 25% wage increase and an increase in starting wages to over $28 an hour. Union members still must ratify it. The UAW has already reached deals with Ford and Stellantis. The strikes have reportedly cost the automakers billions of dollars in lost production. Well, it's a big day on Wall Street today after stocks took a hit last week. Stocks are up as, tr as traders get ready for a big week that includes a decision from the feds on interest rates, the latest jobs reports, and Apple's earnings. Right now, the Dow is up more than 500 points. It's headed for its best day since June. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ are also up more than a percentage point story. Well, let's talk weather because <laughs> it's going to be another sunny day, Rod, and it should be good a good night for trick-or-treaters tomorrow. Yes, uh, the big story for Halloween. So, uh, number one, it's, it's not going to be the beautiful deep blue sky that we're having today, but absolutely dry, zero rain chance. Remember a year ago, it rained and rained and rained. We had an inch of rain on Halloween. Uh, this time around, all dry, partly cloudy. Of course, this is tomorrow evening. Now, there is the scenario that maybe it's more than partly cloudy, maybe it's overcast. So I can't promise you you're going to see the moon or the stars twinkling, but it will be dry and it will be pretty comfortable. We should still be 50 degrees, maybe slightly warmer at 7 o'clock, kind of prime time trick or treat hours. And then 9 o'clock when all the ghosts and goblins should be getting home, it's going to be about 47 degrees and uh, most of us are going to see fairly light winds. So that's really nice. Okay, let's get you back to today. This is the finale of the clear blue skies. Here's uh, up around the column from the Astoria column, looking off across Young's Bay right there and off to the uh, southwest, 56 degrees. All of our cameras show clear skies. Here's a reserve, 51, and downtown Portland, 51 degrees as well. I think we're on track to get up to 60 today, and then we'll be a cool evening about 46, 8 o'clock. Wednesday is the day that eventually raindrops start coming back, and once that happens, it's really going to get wet later in the week. That's ahead of my seven-day forecast. All right, Rod, thanks so much. Well, Seaside police need police your help say finding this man who was last seen in Portland. He's 18 years old and accused of attempted murder. Police say he brutally assaulted someone, then led police on a high-speed chase into Washington County. Ashley Grams has the details. Police say an 18-year-old, Isaiah Thompson, is wanted after he brutally attacked someone in Seaside and stole their car just after midnight on Friday. He's wanted for some pretty serious stuff and um, we'd like to get him into custody. Thompson is accused of stealing a Ford Mustang and leading Seaside police on a chase down Highway 26. 
Eventually, he got away from those officers heading into Washington County. Our first deputy that spot him said he was easily going well over 100 miles an hour, and that was without any police officers behind him. That's Detective Wild says Thompson got off the highway. Then he crashed the car near railroad tracks at Northwest Glencoe in Hillsborough. Thompson ran off on foot. They had three canines that were helping track this person just because of the severity of what he was wanted for. And unfortunately, they didn't find him. Here's another look at the teen who's now on the run. In Seaside, Thompson will face charges of attempted murder, first degree robbery and reckless driving. But until then, police are still looking for him. With the help of um, some transit police officers, tracked him to the max. He got on the max and last we knew, I believe he got off the max somewhere in Portland. Police say if you see Thompson, don't approach him. Just call 911. Ashley Grams, KGW News. A Portland man is calling on the city to ramp up efforts to address its drug and homeless crisis. After a woman having a mental health crisis tried to take his daughter from a local park. Now this happened on October 12th at Cooch Park in northwest Portland. Scott Mars says the woman was wearing nothing but a t-shirt and was running around the park. So he called 911. While he was on the phone, the woman grabbed his daughter and tried to run off. The woman literally got five steps before I grabbed the back of her head with her, by her ponytail, put her down on the ground and got my daughter and got out of it. Now, this isn't the first incident like this that we've told you about at Cooch Park. Just last month, a man wielding a machete was threatening people as they walked by, and police took the machete but didn't arrest the man. The Washington senator who brought a gun on a plane will not face charges. Senator Jeff Wilson was on his way to Hong Kong from Portland on October 20th when he realized his gun was in his luggage. Wilson reported the gun to authorities as soon as he landed. And Chinese authorities charged Wilson with possession of an unregistered firearm and detained him for three days. A Chinese court dropped the charges in a hearing yesterday. Well, today we learned that Hamas has killed a woman who grew up in Portland. The Israel Foreign Ministry shared the news of Shani Luke's death on social media. She's a former student at the Portland Jewish Academy and was kidnapped during the terror attack at a music festival on October 7th. Her death comes as we've learned Hamas has released a female soldier. NBC's Jay Gray reports from Tel Aviv. And Israeli Defense Forces tell us that a hostage has been released this evening, turned over to IDF troops as they were on the ground in operations inside of Gaza. She is a female soldier with the IDF, is said to be in good condition and has been reunited with her family. That operation is expanding and those troops are advancing further into Gaza. We know that they are setting up defensive lines and then working forward from there. They are getting assistance, obviously, from continued airstrikes. The Israeli Navy now involved as well and striking from the coastline there. More than 600 targets hit in the last 24 hours, uh, according to the IDF, including weapon depots, dozens of tank installations, underground tunnels, as well as operational structures. We know that the uh, human toll in all of this continues to grow and humanitarian aid uh, is moving in, but not nearly enough, according to those on the ground. We do expect for that humanitarian aid to be ramped up in the coming days. Even the IDF has said that they expect more trucks to move across the border with Egypt, bringing water, bringing medicine, bringing food, but still uh, not allowing fuel into Gaza. And that continues to be a serious problem, especially for the few hospitals that are still operating. They are running very low on fuel at this point. That's the latest from here in Tel Aviv. I'm Jay Gray, NBC News. All right. Meantime, the Biden administration is unveiling a plan to combat anti-Semitism on college campuses. As part of the plan, the DOJ and Homeland Security will partner with campus law enforcement, tracking hate related rhetoric online and providing federal resources to schools. Anti-Semitism incidents in the U.S. rose nearly 400 percent since the terrorist attacks in Israel. That's according to the Anti-Defamation League.